Oh, um, aloha. Um, my name is Joseph Kuli Lindsay Kamara. O mauna kea kuu mauna, o wailuku kuu vai. I live with my family on the slopes of Mauna Kea in uh, Vauma'u Kele of Kaumana. Um, I'm a lineal descendant of Mauna Kea, of Umiali Loa, of Kukahau Ula, of Wakea, and of Mauna Kea. I stand here today representing myself, my family, and Mauna Kea. <clears throat> to enhance, protect, conserve, and manage how it is unique and limited natural, cultural, and historic resources held in public trust for current and future generations of the people of Hawaii, Ne and his visitors in partnerships with others from the private and public sectors. This is your mission statement. Um, changed a little bit since 2015, but this is your mission statement. To enhance, protect, and conserve our natural resources. Um, I know TMT will... Uh, bring job opportunities, bring educational opportunities. But your mission is to stand for the resource. I am here today, I'm here today because based on um, the development, the cumulative impacts of astronomy, the adverse, significant cumulative impacts of astronomy on Mauna Kea, it is, it is, it is evident that the protection is not um, there has not been adequately protected. And to even consider further development, further desecration, that's why, I'm, uh, that's why I'm forced to be here today, to protect those resources. Um, yeah, um, yeah in, uh, those, uh, those resources have not been, has not been um, um, so Mauna Kea is a cultural resource, a natural resource and a historic resource, and it has not been uh, it has not been protected adequately. Um, you know, at the beginning of this, I was kind of cynical. Uh, I believe that you know there's corruption and all these things, but um, you know, the more I've been in it, I I think it's based more that um, that there's no value, there's no value placed on on um, the spiritual the spiritual uh, the spiritual value of the landscape of Mauna Kea, the value of connection, of Kanaka to the land. Um, come on, man. Um, there's no value. Um, uh, and it's the, um, it's the absence of value that, that let, let us make the, the decisions to continue the desecration of this place. Um, we talk about sacred. We talk about sacred like, um, you know, the word is overused. But um, it comes, for me, it comes back to connection, connection, familial connection to um, to elements of nature. And we might say, what is the practical value of this? Mauna Kea is our genesis. Um, it's the birth. Not, in Hawaiian, it's, it's where the, the heavens meet the earth. It's where we connect to everything behind us, everything uh, to the waters, to the by Kapuakani, where we can stand in the presence of our hakua. Um, the Vaikapuakane to the deepest waters in the Moanaliha and down to Pele until the next, into creation of what will come. Um, Mauna Kea represents that connection to the natural world. And um, you might say, like, what is the practical value of that? Um, the Hawaiian culture, um, is, um, so, uh, we talk about sustainability nowadays. The Hawaiian culture was radically, radically efficient based on Ahupua'a system of defined specific watersheds. Um, our civilizations was based, that was overlain. Um, our agricultural systems was based where our taro farms and our fish ponds not only provided food, but, but filtered and purified our water. Real radically, um, radically efficient systems overlain onto the wow system, which is similar to our current day zoning, um, but far superior where, where different zones, Vaukanaka, Vaukua, things are placed in, in an order of an efficiency that we have not, uh, has not been rivaled until this day. 
And we might say, oh, so what that was in the past, or what does that have to do with this? Those systems was born out of the connection to the land. And the, the connections that we would build is, is based on what we call this. Uh, it comes from these sacred places where we can go to connect to our land. And, um, and Mauna Kea, in the whole world, I tell you guys right now, is the best place in the whole world, maybe in the whole universe, to connect to the Aina, to teach people to connect. Um, and until we understand that value, we will not, we'll not be able to make informed decisions on how we should manage our resources. And um, TMT is going to be the best observatory in the world. Mauna Kea is the best place for observation. It's true. But what the world really needs, the technology we need, the science we need, is how to reconnect to the land. What Doug Ian said before is right. We are on a precipice. We are at this, at this junction in time. Are we going to honor, reconnect to our land, honor our places, Take care, of our, um, take care of our earth, put its needs above our own, or we're going to continue to extract, develop, and desecrate for our perceived needs, for what we think we need to know, what we think we want to see. Um, the, the technology we need is the things we already know from Hawaiians, how to malama our land, how to live in harmony, how to develop things in a, in a way that is not detrimental to our land. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, because there's no value placed on these things, we do not address it in things like EIS, our EISs. In the 2009, um, EIS, Governor Lingo signed off on the ENS for the tallest building on Hawaii Island with a footprint of five acres to excavate 64 cubic yards equivalent to 26 Olympic swimming pools in a conservation district in the most significant cultural landscape in Hawaii, I feel in the world, with a finding of no significant impact. No significant impact. When significant impacts was already identified in 2005, impact for a much smaller development, it says, uh, the Kek Auriga others and future activities on the summit of Mauna Kea would continue the substantial adverse impact on cultural resources. No area at or near the summit is assumed to be devoid of archaeological properties, including the, the slopes surrounding the pool, which can be indirectly affect, uh, affected by development on the pool, grading, removal of earth for new structures and roads, infrastructure development, or other observatory projects that could adversely affect these structures. It's already, it's already stated. Um, even the TMT EIS cites cumulative, um, from a cumulative perspective, the impact of cultural resources will continue to be substantial, adverse, and significant. Um. And um, so, so this, so this, um, so this EIS that was accepted, you know, it allowed the impacts to be framed as incremental when they're Clearly, clearly cumulative. Um, you need to take in effect the cumulative adverse effect of, of, of uh, astronomy development as a whole on, on Mauna Kea. And I can understand why, why TMT, somebody writing the EIS for TMT, would frame it that way. They got paid a lot of money to do so, um, to frame it and to, to, um, to give mitigations. Um, but... Um, what bothers me is that the governor would accept that. And as you, as BLNR, who's, who's charged with protecting the resources, would make decisions based on a finding of no significant impact. Um, a big mitigation for the TMT that, that was cited was um, giving money to um, educational, um, to educational um, opportunities and to... Um, and to uh, the betterment of the positions of Native Hawaiians, um, the conditions of Native Hawaiians, um, that's, not a really a dirt, that's not really a valid mitigation, but it is um, something that is valuable. Um, okay. But um, we don't need TMT to do this. HRS 171-17 requires the borderland and natural resources to have a fair market value assessment for any land leased for any land lease, a fair market value assessment. 
This is the, supposedly the best astronomy place in the world, 11,000 acres, free for the past 48 years. Um, um, required by law, 171-17, HRS 171. We need to do a fair market value assessment. It has not been done. Um, so, when we to, uh, so when, like um, Mr. Flores said earlier, that the Kapa'akai analysis, there was no money for it. The reason for these things is because we have failed to uphold the law on these lands. <laughs> and even the, the lease amount proposed by TMT did not go through a fair market value assessment. It's what they are willing and able to pay. And that is not the law. That is not, that is not what the law says. And, and they are correct and said that none of the other observatories pay any lease. The next, very next HRS, HRS 171-18, Public Land Trust. All funds derived from state lease or other disposition of public land shall be appropriated by the laws of the state, provided that all proceeds and income of the sale, lease, or other disposition of lands ceded to the United States by the Republic of Hawaii under the joint resolution of annexation, which a lot of us know never re, um, is invalid, um, approved July 7, 1898, or acquired in exchange for lands, okay, okay, I skip a little bit, um, shall be held in public trust for the support of public schools and other public educational um, institutions for the betterment of the conditions of Native Hawaiians as defined by the Hawaiian Commission's Act, 1920, as amended, for the development of farm and home ownership on a widespread basis as possible for the making of public improvements and provisions of the lands of public use. So basically, by not doing these lands, you're taking away from education. By not charging fair market value assessment, you're taking away from education. You're taking away from Hawaiians. So we, we don't need, so I'm going to say this to Puel, guys, we don't need continued desecration and development to provide for the needs of education and for Native Hawaiians. All we have to do is, is uphold the law. And I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. I've, I've, been, I've been kind of bashing you guys. You know, um, There's a lot of history. I mean, a lot of us got handed down a, a bad hand. And um, there, are, there is very good work being done on Mauna Kea by the LNR. We're protecting the whole summit area of, 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 uh, of uh, we're protecting the, the paleocritical habitat, working on reforestation of the whole summit area. But the funding for this comes from state and federal taxpayers, not for the, from this whole revenue we have up there that could be used to manage the mountain and have the money so we can do the things we need to do. People getting lease free. The best place in the world. And people expect to get lease free. It's something that um, we, yeah, I, I guess the point I'm trying to make is funds for education does not hinge on TMT. It's not a mitigation that we should be thinking that we're not going to have anything if we don't continue this thing. Um, things that was not addressed by the contested case hearing, um, um, there are law, um, the United Nations Declarations of the Rights of Indigenous People. I had brought in Milani Trask, who's an expert in this. It was totally um, it's something that a judge said that she couldn't consider. But I want to let you guys know. UNDRIP, United, um, Article 11, Article 12, Article 25, please read it. Be aware of the rights of Indigenous peoples before, as you guys make your decisions. Be aware of the letter that the UN wrote to the governor, um, to Governor Ige. Um, asking him to consult with Native Hawaiians before considering this project. I would, I would, very, I would urge you guys to please read it. The contested case hearing officer didn't want to hear, um, said she couldn't hear it, but um, I, would, uh, I, would, I would urge you guys to, to, to go and look at that. Um, I've, I've submitted it as, as evidence in the contested case. Um, in closing, I want to say that we may have different value systems, but um, I'm not a fanatic. Um, I, a lot of times we've been phrased as, uh, um, framed as people who's not willing to compromise. But the fact of the matter is, as far as astronomy development goes on Mauna Kea, Mauna Kea is over-compromised. It's compromised. It's already compromised. Given the cumulative impacts on Mauna Kea, I cannot support and I will always oppose something of the scope and scale of TMT. It's... Uh, and I really urge you guys, you guys have a hard job to protect the resources. I really urge you guys to, um, to look at one thing. I'll try to share something real fast that I learned uh, growing up about uh, Hawaiian culture. K 
Okay, so um, when I was small, you know, I, we learned this thing. If you can take one rock or oh, ask the rock, ask the rock if you can take the rock. Okay, as a kid, you know, we talk to rocks, we talk, uh, we ask the rock. Um, well, I never get to do the whole thing, but um, it's about connection. It's about, it's about putting the needs of an inanimate thing, seeing it as a human, asking it, consider its needs. Consider its needs as something equal to yours, maybe even paramount to yours. So I really urge you guys, if you guys get a chance, go to Mount Nakea before you make this very important decision, very important decision that we all have to live with for the rest of our lives and the rest of our children's lives. Please, go ask the mountain. Go ask the mountain. And let that guide your decision. Mahalo. Mahalo.